Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered a tumor and its knowledge of biochemistry? So how does a knowledge of biochemistry helps you, helps you to understand the pathological knowledge and helps to correlate the prognosis and the treatment of a cancer? So a tumor cells, as you know, is richly supplied with the blood vessels and it grows on and on. But if you have a chemotherapeutic reagent specially designed for this cancer, you may be able to treat this. In this video, I will tell you a novel mechanism or novel way of diagnosing and treating a cancer by a new thing called as oncometabolism. Let's understand what exactly does this oncometabolism mean. Well, you might have heard about a isocytic dehydrogenase. That means you might have heard about this TCA cycle. A TCA cycle has this, you know, all these enzymes coming up. But what you might also remember that there is an enzyme called as isocytrate and this isocytroid is acted upon by isocytic dehydrogenase to make it alpha keto glutamate on which again acts alpha keto glutamate dehydrogenase and this obviously forms NADP DH and converts to succinyl coenzyme now this is plain biochemistry and a Krebs cycle or TCA cycle how do we put this knowledge into hand when we're understanding something called as onco metabolism so see what happens sometimes guys that it's a surprising genetic alterations which is discovered by a novel um, mechanisms. So what happens sometimes, this isocytrate, what I'm talking about here is something called as onco, onco metabolism. Okay, a new update of onco metabolism. So isocytrate dehydrogenase, it sometimes is acted upon by IDH as a normal IDH. I can write this a wild type of IDH, a wild means unmediated, okay, it's normal and this forms alpha keto glutarate, this we all know, okay, we all know this and this again then uh, then changes to succinyl coenzyme, everything is normal here. Well, what happens sometimes is, what happens sometimes is, this isocytidine is, it has a mutation, it has a mutation, so this alpha keto glutarate this upon action by the IDH1 or the IDH2, which we can say it's a mutant form of IDH, it's a mutant form of IDH, this converts the alpha keto glutarate to something called as 2 hydroxy. Okay, it is called as 2 hydroxy glutarate, glutarate. Well, this actually, which is referred to as 2 HG, this becomes an onco metabolite. I'll tell you why and how. See what happens, this 2-HG, this 2-HG, it basically starts inhibiting a variety of substrates. It starts inhibiting a variety of substrates because this has now a new function. Remember one thing that the IDH mutation, this IDH mutation, it now acquires a new function because with a new product is being formed called as 2-hydroxy glutarate. So what happens guys, this 2-hydroxy glutarate, remember this, this is very, very important, this 2 hydroxy rate this is called as onco metabolite this is being called as onco metabolite if you ask me sir why it is being called as onco metabolite the answer is this leads to a inhibition of a product called as tet2 called as tet2 remember guys that tet2 normally controls if i tell you what does a tet2 do remember a tet2 this gene it normally it normally controls the epigenetic modifications epigenetic epigenetic modifications in simple words it causes dna hypermethylation it causes hypermethylation hypermethylation of the dna it causes hypermethylation of the dna that means if the 2 hydroxyl rate is inhibiting the TET2. So this inhibition of TET2, this inhibition of TET2, this causes abnormal DNA methylation. This leads to abnormal, it leads to abnormal DNA methylation. And remember guys, with the abnormal DNA methylation, it causes abnormal epigenetic modification. I should not remind you, epigenetics is something in which a DNA Sequence does not change, but still the DNA expression changes. It's called epigenetics. So now what happens? This abnormal DNA methylation, it leads to abnormal expression of the cancer genes. It leads to 
abnormal expression of cancer genes a few of them that you must remember is like the ras and the receptor tyrosine kinase receptor tyrosine kinase remember one thing so is this responsible and what happens this abnormal expression of cancer genes this leads to obviously the tumors it leads to the tumors now the point to understand here is the point to understand here is you may not be able to uh, inhibit a wild type of idh because drugs are not available against it but yes you may be able to inhibit the mutated form of adh yes you heard it correct there are some drugs being developed which can basically inhibit the mutant idh inhibitor that means there are some drugs developed against this one there are some mutant idh1 and idh2 inhibitors and this is what is the recent discovery this recent discovery is being called as a a breakthrough mechanism of treating certain cancer which have this idh mutations what are those drugs remember recently approved recently approved drugs which come in this category there is mutant idh1 or idh2 inhibitors which actually are fda approved fda fda approved these are some which are called as sidenib sidde okay sidenib now with sidenib there are two types of sidenib which have been discovered one is ina e n a ina sidenib and one is evo sidenib evo sidenib now these two are being used to treat those cancer which have the typical mutation of idh remember only mutant idh therefore we say a mutated idh has a better process compared to a normal or a unmutated or a wild type of idh which are those cancers so we will see they are helpful in they are helpful in some tumors which have the mutant idh mutation mutant idh mutation of i am i means mutated these are gliomas which i'll tell you a bit in a uh, separate also aml again this is very very important aml it can be peripheral t cell lymphoma peripheral t lymphomas it can be chondrosarcomas chondrosarcomas it can be cholangio cholangiocarcinomas cholangio carcinomas and also prostate cancers so this drugs are being used to treat these all tumors nowadays all of them are being used to treat nowadays remember among them i should not miss gliomas because this is a definite 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 breakthrough coming up remember among gliomas let's talk about glioblastomas so glioblastomas which i also discuss in my regular classes if you remember the glioblastoma if you will remember it simply is a world health organization grade 4 brain tumor remember it's a world health organization grade 4 glioma remember so the glioblastoma it is idh mutated form or can be idh wild form a few thing that you must know here is that the idh which is a mutated form is called as secondary secondary and is seen in younger age younger age this type of tumor are those in which the low grade gliomas low grade gliomas they have progressed to they have progressed to the grade 4 grade 4 now if you compare this information to the idh wild type those are called as primary primary they are seen in old age they are seen in old age and remember they are new tumors they are new new tumors the new tumors now what else should you know obviously one information is idh mutation here and this is idh wild or un mutated type now remember guys one more thing that there are some other mutations as seen mutations other mutations which can be seen in this gliomas which may be a question this year it is p53 p53 and a atrx mutation p53 mutation and the atrx mutation but the same thing in the primary or the wild type of glioblastoma is a tert mutation tert the tert mutation and a gain of chromosome 7 or a loss of chromosome 10 chromosome this may be seen this may be seen now if i tell you what should you actually be concerned about 
you should be concerned about the treatment. So among these two, which can be treated by the drugs that is inacidinib and evocidinib? Obviously, it is mirrored form that is the secondary glioblastomas, not the primary ones. And therefore, remember the overall survival, the overall survival of this after the diagnosis is two to four years for IDH mutant 5 and six months, six months to two years in a wild type of in a wild type of in a wild type of glioblastomas and therefore we can say it has a better prognosis better prognosis being better in this one and this is poorer in the unmutated or the wild form of glioblastoma so as you understand this oncometabolite is a recent breakthrough and i can tell you every brain tumors especially glioblastomas or aml should be actually seen for an IDH mutation either by the immunohistochemistry or a genetic analysis and if they are mutant those drugs are definitely started to give a good prognosis to the patients isn't it new and that is how you correlate back chemistry pathology and everything that is the coming up future i hope you like the video if you really liked it do like subscribe and comment on this video thank you good wishes and stay blessed